Grace and peace, everybody. You're here with Apostle George Dixon, a.k.a. New Rev in the house, bringing you word and power through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today I want to discuss, uh, continue discussing from last the last week's segment. We came in dealing with delivery. I was trying to get my tongue from untied here. But dealing with deliverance, amen. And last time we talked about, the, you know, we can't even begin to de help others be delivered, amen, without first dealing with our own situation. And we said that our base scripture was going to come from Mark 16, 17, that's chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Amen. And for those that may not have been on the show last week, let's go to our tool. Get your Bibles. This is what they look like. Get your Bibles. And um, let's turn to Mark 16, 17. We always want to read our base scripture because you know, you got to have something to stand on. And then once you have your foundation sure, then you start building your infrastructure. And once you got your infrastructure in place, then you can hide behind that because now you can hide behind what, what, what we call the Word of God because that's our infrastructure. The foundation is whatever you're going through, that scripture that's going to support what you're going through, but then everything that you build around it help keeps you fortified and keeps you empowered and keeps the kingdom of hell at bay. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's look at Mark 16, 17. And... Uh, it reads, it says, he, he, excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to read verse 16. Y'all remember I tried to do that last week. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Amen. We remember devils, demons, one of the same. Devils, they shall speak with what? New tongues. We hit that. We're not talking about, for those that weren't here, we're not talking about uh, speaking in tongue. We're talking about speaking the way we're supposed to speak. It's a, it's a kingdom language that we speak. We don't say, I can't. We say, I can do all things. We don't say, uh, uh, we, we're, we're, we're sorry or we're weak. No, we're more than conquerors. Come on, somebody. That's what we said last week. And you got to get that digested into your what? Uh, your speaking. Then it says, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All that shall, and if they, they, they never wasn't just talking about the apostles. They weren't just talking about the prophets. They were talking about, or let, but yeah, but yeah, let, me, let me rephrase it. It wasn't they. He wasn't talking about just the apostles. He being Jesus Christ. Amen. He was telling us. The disciples of Jesus Christ. This is the things that we can do. Amen. We can speak this new language. We can, if we believe, we can cast out these devils. But again, before you can do that for somebody else, you know, because people are really ready to go and jump in somebody's face in Jesus' name and start dealing with everybody else's fault. But how can a demon cast out a demon? That's a good question. But I am not a demon. If you sit there and say you're not a demon, then the scripture that says that um, that God said a man that say he uh, doesn't have any sin in him, uh, he's calling God a lie, and that's a bold creature. Let me let me tell you, we all have sin and fall short of the glory. Like we said last week, we need to recognize our weaknesses in the, in the kingdom. And nine times out of ten, the weaknesses is not something like low self-esteem, even though that's a spirit-driven situation. But we're talking about you got sin in your life that's causing you not to be what? In, in the place that you need to be with God. Why do I say that? Because the Word of God said sin is what separates us from the love of God. Things ain't working right in your life. You need to check your life out because uh, there may be something in the barometer that you're not looking at. Come on, somebody, that you need to fix and adjust. So tonight we want to deal with going into talking about demon forces. Amen? Those things that, that surround us and try to ambush us and try to get us out of, out of uh, what? What's the better, better word for it? Try to get us out of focus with God. Better yet, to try to disqualify us from the blessings of God. So we want to be able to help somebody else to see the truth, but we need to start confessing our faults first. 
to God, because again, he's faithful and just to forgive us. We need to confess what's wrong with us. Me, I used to be this drug time, this drug dealer. Come on, somebody. I was a whoremonger. I smoked. Come on, somebody. You got to understand, when you start telling on yourself to, instead of trying to tell it on somebody else, then God will begin to deal with your issues. But if you sit there trying to point a finger at Brother String Bean and Sister, sister uh, Collard Green and, and know good and well your lifestyle is jack, jacked up, come on. God ain't impressed with you what you're trying to do. He wants you to get it free first. And we want to be free. We want to be empowered by God, the Holy Ghost, to be able to operate through us for God. But we got to get the junk out of our trunks. Come on. Get, get those, those skeletons out of your closet. Begin to tell God what your problem is so we can cast them demons out of others, so you can cast them demons out of you. Because what I just had to deal with a situation today. You know, I, I, what I had to say is, you know, I denounced you, the spirit that I was dealing with. In Jesus' name. See, you got to tell him you don't want him to, be, to, ex, to coexist with you or have authority over you. I denounce you in Jesus' name. Loose here and let go. You have no more authority over me. And like I said last week, it's okay to tell the devil, go to hell. Come on, somebody. Get up, go, go to your dry place. You can't just talk to him, identify him, and don't give him direction. You got to tell that demon where to go or else he'll stay right there. And then you got to stop doing that stuff. David stopped doing what he found himself to be doing wrong. You alone, God, have I sinned against. Tell him just like that. God likes that kind of com confession because now he knows you got it. You get it. And there's nobody else that can what? That can, that can justify you but the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. So let us take a quick look at, uh, at the demon force. First of all, I want to give you the classifications of the demons. All right, I hope you got your pens out. And uh, like, like I told the audience last time, don't come to the show without your Bibles because you need to see it for yourself. That's, that's the thing I teach in my church. Don't take man at what he's saying. You know, look at your Bible, make sure he's reading what your Bible say. And then you take what he said and get you some notes. You take what he says and you go home and you study it. If you come to the same conclusion, then you can believe it. Come on, somebody. You know, there's a lot of people that just take people at face value and they're leading them straight. Don't know which direction they're going in. Well, he's the preacher. He might be a false prophet. You ever thought about that? So that's why I'm trying to help us to get free so we can be free enough that the Spirit of God can come and dwell within us and teach leading God us in what? All truths. Amen. The first demon I want you to write on your paper is called the celestial demon. Amen. And we, I'm not going to define them tonight. I'll talk about that in our next segment. Uh, maybe, maybe the next two segments I might deal with that because I think I'm going to probably get pushed uh, two segments with, with what I'm going to talk about tonight. Amen. But the first one you need to look up is called the Celestial Demon. All right. Then I want you to write down the uh, uh, Aerial Demon. Come on. That's right. There's a demon. There are demons that just deal with. I, I, I'll give you the answer. I told you that, right? That was a hint. They're called Aerial Demons. And then you have what is called Aquatic Demons. Okay. Aquatic. How do you spell this? A Q U A T I C. Aquatic. Maybe if I talk right, right. Amen. I heard of you in the spirit. He didn't say it right. Amen. But that's a demon. The demon operate in what? Come on, I'm giving y'all hints. Then you have the terrestrial demon. Y'all probably hear that word terrestrial or celestial all the time. But did you ever take the time to really make sure you understood what they were and how they operate? And what it's all about. Get the definition. Not only get your Webster definition, get you a good Bible dictionary and understand what it means to the saints of God, biblically. All right? Then the last one I want you to understand is your subterraneal demon. Come on. You got to be able to understand the category. There are all types of demons and sins, sinful stuff out there, but all types of demons and sinful stuff out there falls in these five categories. Huh? And how you uh, 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 pull the word. I hate to use the word fight because some of you got to get the wrong impression. It's all about these. No, it's all about this knowledge and this B-I-B-L-E. Basic instruction before leaving this earth. How to fight your enemy. 99% of it is through prayer. Okay, somebody going to check me on that. i say it again. 99% of it is through prayer. Why do I say that? With no prayer life, you get no instruction. Why, what is prayer? Communicating with your what? God. So you got to pray. You got to pray about the situation. But let's go over to the book of Luke. Amen. The sixth chapter. Let me get myself here organized. 
the sixth chapter, and let us look at verse 49, 46, excuse me, I'm all off track today, 46 and verse through 49. And as we read that, I'm going to uh, do my best to enlighten you. That's Luke, the sixth chapter, again, verse 49, and I said it again, verse 46 and through 49. See, the adversary, adversary comes to still kill and destroy. I'm not giving him no credit, but you got to be on point. You got to watch out. They want to attack this show. They're not going to have this show. We're going to get some education. Amen. Luke again, 6th chapter, verses 46 through 49. Let's read. I wish I had some of you in the, in the, in, uh, the booth here with me today because I would have somebody to read for me. But I'm just so accustomed my wife just jumping up reading with authority. So it's my turn tonight. Amen. It says, and why call ye me Lord? That's a good question. Because everybody called the one that said, the supposed to be your Savior, you called him Lord. But I want you to hear him loud and clear tonight. Because we're still talking about deliverance. And what God really wants from us, and Jesus died for us, is for us to come to a place called obedience. And hear what he says. He says, and why call ye me Lord? Lord, and do not the things which, what? The things which I, what? Say. That's a big question. Why call me Lord if you ain't going to do what I say? Huh? Then it says, Whosoever cometh to me and hear my sayings and doeth them, I will show you what? To whom he is like. He's going to show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built his house and dig it what? Deep and lay the foundation what? On a rock. And when the flood arise, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not what? Shake it. Y'all hear that loud and clear now because we're talking about deliverance. For it was founded upon a rock. Verse 49 says, But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that what? Is without a foundation, built and house. Huh? Come on. You see what I see? Upon what? The earth. Wow. That's revelation. One built upon a rock and one built on the earth. One built on the foundation of Jesus and one built on this place called planet earth, following this earth. You see what I'm saying? Then it says, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and what? And immediately it fell. And the, and the ruins of that house was great. Well, what they have to do with deliverance? First of all, how you built. What do you really believe? Where are you, where are you building that? Some people, they go to church 20, 30 years, but they go to church to stay here. They go to church 20 and 30 years and they don't receive the power. They don't receive anything. They don't get true deliverance. Well, what are you really trying to say, Apostle? What I'm really trying to tell you is that if you build your foundation to continue to be of this earth, you're sadly mistaken. Why? Because God has already told us that we're what? We're, we're just so journeying through here. Amen? And what I want you to understand, amen, is that if you're going to be delivered, you got to stop building your life based on what this world is throwing at you. You have to build your life based on what Jesus Christ laid down for us. And he laid his life down for, for a price that you shall be saved. He laid his life down so that you can what? Build your way up and re begin to receive what is what? What he's promised us through, uh, through his, his, his what? Through his coming and through the tree of life. Come on, it sounds get so tight. I wanted to spend it all up without giving you all the answer that is. But the point is, stop building your life as though you're going to stay on this earth and get delivered so that you can get ready to go home. Build your life on a rock, the rock of our salvation. Deliverance would come when you get these principles in place. Now he's, he's what? He's authorized. He has to do what he says he shall do. Amen? So, so uh, what am I really trying to say? I want you to really dig into uh, Luke 6, 46 and 49. Because see, I got hyped up. Amen? I got hyped up. Yes, amen. And I, and I felt my, my preach voice come in there. But I, I need to slow it down and break it, bring it back down so we can go through this and really break it down. Amen? You hear what I'm saying? I don't want to get too fast in it because I want everybody out there that's viewing this to be able to get it and be delivered. Amen? Amen? So I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Amen? Today, and I, and I hope, I hope everyone, you know, will rec have received from this 
Amen. The word and power is so important. Until next week, just study what I've just laid out to today. And if you can believe it, as I always say, if you can believe it, then receive it. Amen. Good night.